Hi, welcome back to Ron's Workbench. In this episode, number nine, number nine, number nine, I'm picking up where I left off uh, in last week's episode with the Miracle Chair Company Build. I want to thank everyone that commented on my color selection for this building um, on my last video. So here I am. I'm going to paint the walls. As I said previously, I'm trying not to load the brush up with a lot of paint. I want to paint to go on so that it's uh, not very opaque. I'm purposely going lightly over some of the parts with some of the paint strokes so you can see some of the natural wood color uh, come through. I want the model to look like a business that is still financially stable, uh, but only to a point. Now, I'm going to speed the video up here because I really don't think you want to spend 20 minutes watching me paint. And right here, tragedy strikes. Oh no! As I pointed out, this piece was very delicate and it snapped as soon as I tried the position of my hand to paint. The bracing on the back of the broken piece, however, helped me glue it back together. And as you can see here, you really can't tell that the piece had any damage to it. And there you have it, all the walls are painted. Now let's move on to the doors and windows. I primed the doors and the windows using a rattle can of white primer. I wanted to try something different with the doors. So what I'm doing here is I'm brushing them with an ink and alcohol mixture. I then wiped off the excess to try and keep the mixture from pooling. Now, the three paints that I originally chose 
to paint the doors was a brown oxide, a burnt umber, and a golden yellow. Oh, and I want to give a quick little shout out to my friend Wilmer over at Indian Head Valley Railroad. Go check out his weekly show, Not Bad, where he showcases new videos and channels that are dedicated to rail fanning and the model railroad hobby. So, I started to paint the entrance door by dry brushing it with golden yellow. And then, in a fit of ingenuity, or maybe it was just a fit, I changed my mind on the entire color schemes and I grabbed some antique white and dry brushed that over the yellow. So at this point, I completely lost my mind and I took some khaki paint and thinned it out with some 99% alcohol and I dry brushed that mixture over the antique white and gold. I did a variation on the freight doors by just dry brushing the antique white and the khaki, uh, thinning both in the alcohol. I was pleased with how the entrance door came out, so I did the rest of the windows using the same colors. After all the windows had time to thoroughly dry, I decided to experiment with three different window glazings. The first one was using the clear acetate that comes with the kit. And the window shades in these pictures are just simply white tissue paper. 
The second window glazing was to use the Window Maker by Model Master. And the third was to use Weld Bond in the same manner that you use the Window Maker. Now, I like the effect that you get with the canopy glue because it looks like individual panes of glass. That's the one thing that I do not like about using the acetate for the glazing because the glazing actually sits behind the window panes and not in the window panes. And that's just my opinion. Uh, there are a million ways to do models and you just do the ones that you enjoy and that you like. So that's the beauty of our hobby. Well, I think I'll wrap up this video right here. Next week, I'll bring the walls together and start on the roof and we'll make some decisions on where this build is headed. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. On the next episode of Ron's Workbench, I get the shingles.